Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. Today is Wednesday, the 12th day of February. It's National Plum Pudding Day today. Have we ever I've never had it? had it. I've never tried it. I've never, I don't think I've ever tried it either. Uh-uh. So I've heard of it before. It's the only thing that's going on today. So uh, oh. we should probably try some plum pudding. Maybe we should. Maybe we'll have that for lunch today. Or probably maybe not. not. <laughs> Dinner tonight? No? Mm, no. All right. Hey, coming up in just a bit, I do have a guest that's going to be joining me. I'm super excited to visit. First time we've ever talked to him. Uh, and it's kind of an, I think, going to be kind of a neat thing. Ryan J. He is a film reviewer. And we're going to be chatting about the 2020 Oscars that were held over the weekend. So uh, did you get a chance to watch, ladies and gentlemen? Heidi, did you watch? I had the chance to watch. I chose not to watch. <laughs> I, maybe that was the wrong wording. <laughs> yes, you had a chance, but I still chose not to. Exactly. Uh, but anyway, we didn't get a chance to see the Oscars. But I'm excited to chat with them about who the winners were and all of that fun stuff. It's on the way. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Student loan debt is out of control for many people. Are you one of them? The average graduate walks away with anywhere from 25000 to 40000 in student loans. Believe it or not, 2% even manage to owe over $100,000 by the time they graduate. If you have several different student loans, let us consolidate them into one loan and one payment at singlestudentloan.com. If you have only one student loan, we may be able to offer you a better rate to help you get that loan paid off sooner at singlestudentloan.com. That's singlestudentloan.com. Now, surveys and studies and such brought to you by BetterCreditCards.com. A Tufts University study found that fireflies are going extinct due to the growing use of pesticides and artificial lights. So uh, oh. pesticides are killing them and then like, you know, bright you lights. You know, I apparently. really have noticed that I haven't seen as many as we used to. I thought maybe they were going extinct because kids would catch them and pull their little wings Write off. Write their and, names with their yeah. butts. That's probably why they're really going extinct. I used to do that. I know you did. You told me about that. I never did that. That's you guys kinda, didn't? No. I find disgusting. that very hard to believe with no. some of the other stuff you guys did. I yeah, find that did. very hard to believe. Yeah, we did some dumb things, but I don't ever remember, you know, smooshing yeah, little fireflies. So. <laughs> <laughs> Her name it is glowed. Heidi. You could write your name out and it would glow on the sidewalk. It was you get a call cool. online too. It's PETA. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. When was the last time you got a new credit card? If you have a card that's been in your purse or wallet for a long time, you should check and see if you're getting the best rates. You may find a better credit card that will give you the points you want or cashback options you don't get right now. At BetterCreditCards.com, you see all the major credit card companies and their best offers. Let them compete to earn your business. And if the one you have right now is better, keep it. Find a card that's a better fit for you at BetterCreditCards.com. That's BetterCreditCards.com. This is your Brain on Drugs, brought to you by TimeForRehab.com. A Michigan State University student by the name of Jack DeBrander was arrested on two counts of battery after urinating off the balcony of a bar and striking two women below in the face and mouth, heads, hands, and arms. 20-year-old DeBrander, first of all, 20, what was he even doing? He was intoxicated when he stepped to the railing of the balcony in a place called the Yard of Ale, St. Petersburg, two, uh, 12.25 a.m. So this is in the middle of the middle of the night. He removed, well, I'm going to just not read this word for word. He uh, proceeded to urinate on the victims. There we go. It says each of the women uh, in the criminal complaint state that they were struck in the face and, and all over. Gross. The, and bad that is stuff. so disgusting. They don't indicate whether he needed, med- if, the, if they needed medical attention. Cops noted that he was found to be intoxicated and uncooperative. He was booked into the county jail uh freed after posting a thousand dollar bond i'm wondering if he knew them or if they just happened to be there happened to be standing there when i don't know yeah, that's, that's a it, either way nasty yeah don't do that that is what happens when your brain is on drugs John and Heidi. now big screen little screen brought to you by channel surfer tv.com disney has acquired the film rights to the Broadway play Hamilton, how much do you suppose the film rights for a play like that would cost? Oh, I'm sure it was millions. Yeah, $75 million. Jeez. So uh, I'm not sure what they're going to do with that, the film rights, if they're going to make a movie, if they're going to make a animated film, if they're going to make a, like the play, but just like record it. I have no idea. But $75 million bones. They got plans of some sort. And Dog the Bounty Hunter's girlfriend, Moon Angel, shot down rumors that have been floating 
that uh, they're supposedly getting married. She says that she only likes him as a friend. Like, guys, we're friends. Oh. It's okay for him oh, to... Oh, that's interesting because yeah. Yeah, I've heard that from multiple I know. sources. But she's saying, guys, we're friends and we're okay. we're close and, you know, no, that's not what's going well, on. Well, good, so. because I was thinking that I it remember. was way too soon. Yeah, you were saying yeah. uh, his wife just died. Yeah. This is too fast. And again, uh, I don't I'm know. I'm glad to hear that. That's too. I've nice. got a link to the story if you want to read all about it. It's in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. It's a new year. Have you made a resolution to quit drinking or to finally get away from drugs for good? These are both habits that are hard to kick, but you can do it. We want to help you. Timeforrehab.com is here to help you find the help you need with your particular situation. If you want to make this year the year you get the help you need to live a normal life again, start with a little help from us at timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. Now your scoop of the day brought to you by FunkyMonkeyShirts.com. Yahoo Finance reports that Amazon only paid $162 million in taxes. Only $162 million? That sounds like a lot of money, doesn't it? Well, not when you think of what comes into Amazon. $13 billion profit, yeah. 2019. So $162 million. I'm not sure how much they should have paid, though. When they say they only paid, $162 million is a lot of money. That's a it lot, is a lot of, money. of money, but uh, I mean, think of our own personal taxes and how that. much we pay in versus what we earned. I understand that is well, not much. If you want to do the math, to me, that still sounds like a whole lot of money, and apparently, that wasn't enough for Yahoo Finance. Seven uh, Eleven has opened a cashierless store in Texas, and the internet's going nuts. Here's the thing: I remember fifteen years ago, at least. There was a, a store in Iowa. My beautiful bride, Heidi, here is from Iowa. But I remember, I think it was in Peterson, Iowa, maybe? There was a gas station that was literally just like two gas pumps and some vending machines. Because I remember thinking, wow, that's kind of weird. But you paid at the pump, and there were vending machines to get if you wanted a drink. And there was vending machines there if you wanted to get food, like candy bars and stuff. And I was like, oh, wow, that's that was a long time ago. So now that 7-Eleven has done this in Texas, the internet is going crazy. I'm like, well. <laughs> there have been things like that for a long, long time. Uh, disgraced investment banker Bernie Madoff has asked for an early prison release. Why, do you think? Why? He says, I only have about 18 months to live. Okay, so okay. what? Good. You have accommodations that will take you exactly. well beyond that. So, yeah, there's some folks that are saying, oh, you know what, he served his time, you should let him out. And there's other people going, uh, dude, I'm still broke because of the guy. So, life in prison means life. Yeah, that's not good. In prison. And uh, I just talked to a dude who's writing a book about Bernie Madoff, and he's done like a bunch of interviews with Bernie Madoff. We're going to be doing an interview with the guy who did the interview with Bernie Madoff, <laughs> which sounds really funny. But uh, I'm, I've been trying to get this all lined up. Uh, we're going to do it right about the time the book comes out. It'll be sometime later this year. But he said he's had some really interesting conversations with him and with the FBI officer that arrested him and all of the details. And there's this book that's coming out that sounds like it's a fascinating story that in the news, we only saw a certain bit of it. But you know, when, when it comes right down to it, there's a lot more to it. So maybe after reading the book, we'll say, oh, wow, they should have let him out. But I don't know. As of right now, public opinion says, leave him in there. Mm -hmm. And Pablo Escobar's top hitman, known as Popeye, died last year, uh, last week. Did you see that in the news anywhere? No. I didn't either. But I just, uh, for whatever reason, scrolled across this and it was like, yeah, this happened last week. Oh, really? Hmm. You'd think that would have been a bigger story. And uh, Gilbert Gottfried, I always liked him. I oh, thought he was kind of neat. Uh, I told reporters that sometimes he doesn't know where he is nowadays. He's, he's oh, struggling with, oh. with some... That makes me some, really Some uh, memory issues. and I, Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it, I think that's really sad. I've got a link to the story if you want to read all about it, and I also see that we are all out of time. This has been your Scoop of the Day on The John and Heidi Show. Student loan debt is out of control for many people. Are you one of them? The average graduate walks away with anywhere from 25000 to 40000 in student loans. Believe it or not, 2% even manage to owe over $100,000 by the time they graduate. If you have several different student loans, let us consolidate them into one loan and one payment at singlestudentloan.com. If you have only one student loan, we may be able to offer you a better rate to help you get that loan paid off sooner at singlestudentloan.com. That's singlestudentloan.com. Thank you for listening to the John Ed Heidi Show on a Wednesday. Super excited to visit with Ryan J today. Ryan J is a film critic, and we're going to be talking about the Oscars over the weekend, the 92nd annual Academy Awards. And there was some 
history made over the weekend, and it was a pretty darn busy weekend, wasn't it, Ryan? It was Christmas for someone like me who loves movies. <laughs> and now, were, were there any big upsets at the Oscars over the weekend, or was it kind of what everybody was expecting? Well, as far as the acting categories go, uh, you know, Joaquin Phoenix for Joker, Renee Zellweger for Judy Lord, Jordan Marriage Story, and Brad Pitt, uh, it really kind of, they swept sort of award season. They won almost all the award shows. So there were no surprises there. The surprise was that the night really belonged to Parasite. And while the films and all the categories kind of sprinkled around in each film, you know, 1917, Ford v. Ferrari, uh, Jojo Rabbit, uh, Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, Once Upon a Time, like they all won at least one award. It's very interesting how, how the awards were sprinkled around. But Parasite took home four awards, including Best Director and Best Picture, in addition to the foreign language film or now international film a picture of the year. So, it, and it made history. No foreign language film had ever won the proper best picture category before. So that was a shocker. Not an upset because, you know, it's a very beloved film, but it was quite a shocker. Is is that the movie that people were expecting to win best picture or is that maybe one that was more of a, a surprise to folks? It was a surprise. Uh, it, it was probably a third place to win. really was uh, gunning for Best Picture between 1917 and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Those are the two films that had been winning throughout award season, so it was a really competition between those two. And then that Parasite won it after winning already Best International Film, but then once it won Best Director, that, you know, it's very often, statistically, whoever wins Best Director, the Best Picture is often follows, uh, but there are very rare exceptions. Over, over the 92 years, like, there's just a handful of times that the Best Picture and Best Director split. And so last night was not one of them. Parasite won both. So were there any major like snubs from the Oscars this year? Things that, that people thought for sure were going to win something, and boy, they just didn't? Yeah, I think um, the, I mean, there were there were a bunch of uh, pictures that didn't get nominated, like when J-Lo wasn't nominated uh, for Hustlers, Adam Sandler for Uncut Gems, Eddie Murphy, or even even, you know, there was a whole backlash this year about no female directors being nominated. It was acknowledged throughout the, the awards show several different ways. But uh, Greta Gerwig, especially for Little Women, when the film was nominated and uh, it won for costumes, I think, but uh, her screenplay was nominated and the rest of it, but she wasn't nominated, was, was quite a surprise. Again, uh, visiting right now with Ryan J. If folks would like to, to find you and follow what you do, where do they find you online? Well, you can find me on social media. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Ryan J Reviews. Uh, but for all of my full movie reviews, what to see, stream, or skip in theaters now, my website, which is updated weekly, is RyanJReviews.com. And yeah, we're going to throw a link to that to make it really easy to find. I appreciate you taking some time to chat uh, after the Oscars here. And, and again, this is something that uh, there are some folks that were on the edge of their seat, couldn't wait to see it. Some folks that just couldn't care. Were, was viewing for the Oscars this year, was it up? Was it down? Was it kind of like just even? It was up. Considering this is the second year in a row without a host, uh, the pacing and the balance of the show is really good. When you look at it between all the performances and handing out straight awards, it was very tightly produced. There were no awkward moments like in years past where the producers tried to experiment and try interesting things. They were just very straightforward, and it, and it ran long, but it was a good balance this year. Do you think they'll continue the, the path of no host? Has that been working for them? Well, when you look at the response on social media, it got a lot of favorable reviews that way, so it looks like they could do it again. Well, this was the 92nd Academy Awards. They've been doing it a while. They're kind of getting the hang of it, I think, aren't they? Yeah, yeah finally. They're figuring something. They're you know, they always try something funky each year, and then it usually doesn't work. Sometimes they have the voiceover artists trying to crack jokes, and, and they're never funny, or they'll bring on people to do little uh, little bits here and there that just seem experimental. Remember, they used to have, like, someone deliver food to the audience or do selfies with the audience or little bits that were just always, like, you know, maybe going viral and making a social media sensation, but it was like, this had nothing really to do with the Oscars. So this year they just kept it to business, and it seems really smooth. Thank you again for taking the time to chat with us, sir. Thank you, too. Again, our guest today has been Ryan J. from Ryan J. Reviews, What to See, Stream, and Skip. If you'd like to follow him on social media, he has links on his page to all of his different social media channels, and I have a link to his page, ryanjreviews.com. I've got that in the show notes for today at John and Heidi Show.com. Thanks for listening on a Wednesday. Do you have a lucky shirt? FunkyMonkeyShirts.com has several lucky shirts to wear next month for St. Patrick's Day. Or if it's a really lucky shirt, you can wear it every day. Green shirts, four leaf clovers, Irish sayings, and more. Don't wait. If you order your lucky shirt right now, 
It can be here in time to wear for St. Patrick's Day. Find t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more at FunkyMonkeyShirts.com. That's FunkyMonkeyShirts.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? One man has saved more than 200 people from suicide. It's a sad fact that the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco has become a site where many people take their life. But a highway patrolman there, California Highway Patrol officer, has done more to combat this problem than any other individual. Kevin Briggs, who battles depression himself, has personally talked over 200 people down from taking this proverbial plunge. Uh, After retiring in 2013, he wrote a book called Guardian of the Golden Gate and now goes on speaking tours encouraging public dis- discussion of suicide and mental illness. I think it's really cool that that uh, he's had a chance to help that many people. Oh yeah. And you know, in uh, as he said in the book, he can relate to them because he's been there. And I think that that is amazing. If you've been through something and your life has been saved, think of how you can use that gift and I know at the time going through it, it doesn't feel like a gift, but now you have this amazing gift to be able to talk to somebody in a situation and relate to them. Make sure you use that. I've got a really cool uh, link to this story. It's in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. When was the last time you got a new credit card? If you have a card that's been in your purse or wallet for a long time, you should check and see if you're getting the best rates. You may find a better credit card that will give you the points you want or cashback options you don't get right now. At BetterCreditCards.com, you see all the major credit card companies and their best offers. Let them compete to earn your business. And if the one you have right now is better, keep it. Find a card that's a better fit for you at BetterCreditCards.com. That's BetterCreditCards.com. Now, a news headline from somewhere in this world. We're heading to China, Heidi, and uh, it's not even about the coronavirus. So okay. it's uh, like every story we've had from there right. is not about that. So here, here we go. Dateline China. A man in China desperate to charge his phone ended up disrupting traffic when he plugged his mobile phone in at a traffic light. Officers found the man had opened the light box switch, unplugged the traffic light, and plugged in his phone to charge it. First of all, how can you even do that? Is that... <clears throat> you is that even a thing? Yeah, apparently you can. I didn't think you could just unplug a traffic light, but apparently <laughs> in China they're just plugged in. They might in need to increase security a smidge. Yeah, I think maybe change a little bit of how you're doing things there. But this has been a news headline from somewhere in this world. It's a new year. Have you made a resolution to quit drinking or to finally get away from drugs for good? These are both habits that are hard to kick, but you can do it. We want to help you. TimeForRehab.com is here to help you find the help you need with your particular situation. If you want to make this year the year you get the help you need to live a normal life again, start with a little help from us at TimeForRehab.com. That's TimeForRehab.com. Now some weird news brought to you by WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. I'm going to just tell you right now, this next story is kind of yucky. Capital okay. yuck. Yucky. We had two of these. We had one earlier where a guy urinated on some people. Yeah. That's yucky. Yeah, and now that we was. This. Some people are just being yucky. But this yucky story comes from hmm, a Florida story. Huh, imagine. Says the yeah. argument turned repulsive Friday when a Florida woman smeared dog feces in her fiance's face. Ew. Yeah. I warned you. I told you it was coming. Sheriff deputies responded to a disturbance in St. Petersburg where they found a man who had been engaged in an argument with his fiance, 41-year-old Jane Marie Faulkner. During the confrontation, she repeatedly hit him and then smeared him in the face with, well, we already talked about it. Weren't both of these nasty stories in St. Petersburg? I think they I were. I think maybe could have been. Faulkner, who was intoxicated at the time. Shocker. Yeah, this could have been part of my other segment. We have a whole segment just for drunk people and a whole segment just for Florida people. And here we have this story. And it's not in either of those segments. Uh, but it says uh, she was intoxicated at the time and admitted that she did do what we talked about doing. She was unwilling to provide any more details of the argument. Faulkner was arrested on domestic battery charges. She was the primary aggressor in the argument. And then uh, she was released on a $2,000 bond. And the judge ordered her to stay away from the dude. So leave leave this guy alone. I they, don't think the judge needs to order. I mean, I think uh, the guy's probably going to make that decision for himself you never know. if he's smart. Uh, I hope so. Boy, what a weird story. That's why it is today's Weird News. Now your moment of duh, brought to you by singlestudentloan.com. Bruce McConville, turns out to be a very uh, apt name for this gentleman, would rather burn his own money than give it to his ex-wife. Mm. A disbelieving superior court judge is giving him 30 days to rethink this claim. 55-year-old Ottawa businessman failed 
mayoral candidate, sold some properties and businesses behind his wife's back, withdrew a million dollars in cash, mm. and then, wink, wink, burned the money. What? Yeah, in two bonfires. September 23rd, he burned $743,000. December 15th, $296,000, he says. I Mc- doubt that McConville very much. has long defied a court order to file an affidavit about his fi- uh, finances, notably where the money went from these sales that went on behind her back. Because his financial affairs remain a mystery, the court has been unable to figure out what he owes in child and spousal support. As a result, he's been paying neither. McConville also defied a court order to not sell his properties. Uh, there was a fear that he was trying to keep the proceeds out of the court reach, but he did anyway. McConville, in fact, sold some assets to his former accountant. The judge told the court that he didn't think McConville set anything on fire, let alone a million dollars in cash. No, I don't think so either. It was a bad idea, and here's what I hope he gets. I hope he gets to go to prison until he remembers where I this money too. is. Because what he did is wrong. I mean, he thought that, hey, I'm going to do this, and they're going to say, oh, well, you burned the money? Okay, well, I guess yeah, there you go. Yeah, he didn't burn that money. That money didn't get burned. No. There's just no way. I don't, I don't believe it for a second. I've no. got a link to the story. If you want to read all about it, maybe you can convince me. But I don't think I, – I think this is a really sad thing. Uh, really, really sad thing. That's why it's today's Moment of Duh. When was the last time you got a new credit card? If you have a card that's been in your purse or wallet for a long time, you should check and see if you're getting the best rates. You may find a better credit card that will give you the points you want or cashback options you don't get right now. At BetterCreditCards.com, you see all the major credit card companies and their best offers. Let them compete to earn your business. And if the one you have right now is better, keep it. Find a card that's a better fit for you at BetterCreditCards.com. That's BetterCreditCards.com. Now, fake news or Florida? Heidi, tell me, is this a true story from the great state of Florida, or is it made up just to trick you and amuse me? Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, tell me, fake news or Florida? A Fort Pierce, Florida woman was arrested for drug possession and told the police the wind must have blown that cocaine into her purse. Oh, yes. Fake news That happens Florida? all the time. I'm going to say Florida. It's a true story. I think we actually read that on the program here. So, uh, yeah, it really did truly happen. So, you know, it's it's almost... More difficult these days to believe the fake news, I mean, I mean the real news, than it is the fake news. Yeah, sometimes. Because I can't think things up like this. But sometimes. folks, if you want to help, you can certainly chime in with fake stories or Florida stories. You can do that on our website, johnandheidyshow.com. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. Now, some good news comes your way courtesy of BetterCreditCards.com. And I think this is good news, Heidi. Do you like good news? I love good news. You look awfully bored over there right now. I'm really sleepy. (laughs) Well, hopefully this will help. Uh, Here's some good news for you. Four children lost in an Alaska blizzard were found alive and huddling around a two-year-old. So, oh, wow. So says four boys went missing for more than 24 hours. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, during a blizzard in Alaska, they were found alive and, quote, doing fine. Christopher Johnson, 14, Frank Johnson, age 8, Ethan Camille, age 7, and Trey Camille, age 2, left on a snow machine, uh, other folks might refer to as a snowmobile, oh. on Sunday afternoon. And it says the Alaskan West Coast area is where they were doing this. They were headed to a, a, a dump near a community, uh, but a blinding snowstorm rolled in and the children disappeared. So it had been 24 hours since they were last seen and they were finally oh discovered. And uh, they said the, 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 these rescuers who found them, uh, 1030 Monday morning, snow machine was there. Uh, they said they scanned the white landscape uh, for any minute details like he'd been trained to do 100 yards away on the ground, a high snow drift. And he said that looked kind of suspicious. It didn't look like anything, but I got closer and I saw some movement. And he said, I couldn't believe my eyes. What they had done is they put the, the youngest one in the middle. Everybody else huddled around, so they used their body heat right. to kind of huddle and keep. And protected this youngest one and all of the others. It was basically their backs that were out. Right. And 
they blocked the wind and a little bit of snow went over them and they saved each other's lives. Wow. So uh, would you think to do something like that? Yes. Would you really? Yes. I don't know that because I would have. Because it's body heat and, I, and it was a good a idea. shelter that would protect you, but yes. I'm, I'm glad they thought of it because it saved their lives. All four of the kids are fine. It says the kids are doing fine. Did they run out of gas or something and they weren't able to... I don't know if they just got disoriented because of the snow and didn't know right. where to go. I don't know. I didn't see in here anything else, but it says... Uh, well, that's wonderful. They were cold and hungry, but they were fine. Good. I've got a link to the story. It might have the details Heidi was asking about. It's in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show.